Hello everyone and welcome back to the Mindful Homestead. My name is Jack. Today is a beautiful spring day here on the homestead. It's probably like 75 degrees. That makes it the perfect day to take our John Suskovich chicken tractor that you see over there and get our Cornish cross meat birds from Murray McMurray Hatchery out onto pasture. Oh yeah, it's so beautiful. So Jackie is the foreman this year of chicken location services. <laughs> so you are deciding where. Because I don't want a torn up front lawn anymore. I know. So where are the chickens gonna go? They are going down in this lower area. Because you'll be the brains and I'll be the muscle. Yeah, well, because I mow the lawn, so I want it to be easy to move. Um, we we'll probably should avoid the line, the um, I mean, I don't fiber know if line. That's the end of the world, but it says irrigation control valves on there, which is kind I of know funny it's kind of it's, funny. It's the fiber optic cable, not. The it's line. where it, it gets joined. I mean, maybe if we just make like, because your parents are gonna park the RV here at some point um, in the next couple of weeks, so I wonder if we do like a a rectangle, like from the. Like whoop. straight across. Yeah, I can like easily move it in and out when I'm mowing to get the edging. Okay. So that way the fence continues to work well. How's everyone doing in here? Oh, it's a mess. Too many chickens in the brooder. It's nice and warm in here. They love it as far as comfort levels because these birds like to be warm this time of year. But uh, but we don't want them in here anymore. It's time for them to get out. It's way too cramped in there. Honestly, I would have liked to have moved them a little bit ago. We've got our chicken tractor out there. We're gonna get our electric fence set up and then we're gonna get these guys moved. You ready to move the chickens? Yep. All right. I just wanted to double check that that's what you wanted. What you found? You know what, it, I picked this up and it felt smaller. Oh yeah, it's way smaller. I was like, this is way lighter Honestly, than I they remember. they usually, it. I feel like almost have too much space. They'll be they'll feel plenty fine, and there's well, less of them. Well, that's why they don't destroy the grass. And there's less of them this year, though. So. You can see this is a one pronger. Yeah. Oh yeah. We might have a problem getting it into the ground too. We'll try it and see what it does. This was some poultry netting we bought from somebody used, and I don't know how. All right, so they did have it wrapped up okay. We were just coming at it from the wrong side. Come help if you want to help. Pull. Okay. Yeah, turn it so they don't get the wind. You gotta kind of lift the door to close that. Look at that. That's perfect. That's good. All right. Yeah. You're the traffic director. Yeah. Well, I don't like the single posts. Well then, there's rocks everywhere. Yep. Yeah, this is only gonna go halfway around. Cause look at how many posts. There's only one, two, three, four, five left, and we're at one, two, three, four.
Can you kind of help <clears throat> control those? Hang on, I gotta. I know, I'm hanging. I don't think no matter how careful we are, when we put this stuff away, it ever comes back out easily the next year. Yeah, sometimes it does. I mean, easier, like, I feel like this is the easiest it's ever come out. That's because I put it away. No, oh, you're just perfect. <laughs> it's like MTV True Life. I installed chicken fencing with my wife. Another year, chickens on the front lawn. I didn't want. <laughs> Another year of fresh poultry in the freezer. There was only minor infighting between the couple as they set up the fencing. Um, we need, do you want to go grab the tray from the dog crate to use as a lid on the cart? Or we have the, oh no, the black bin's full of shavings. No, the black thing is, oh, the tote, yeah. Yeah, because we used that last time. With the, the well, the trailer, the dump trailer, we can just get them all in once. Well, it's mostly shavings. They might have a little bit. But the turkeys are out. That's about as far as you're gonna get. Well, you want me to let go of this? No, walk alongside of it to hold it. So it doesn't slide to the downhill side. Oh, that thing is flipping all the way. What? <laughs> it's just going down fast. Oh my god, it's so hot in there. Come on, guys. Woo! We're roasting you alive. I'll go get the zip ties for the tarp. Yeah, why don't you get they probably get their water first? Yeah. bucks for two. So. With everyone in the coop now, oh, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of, we'll keep them in here now for probably three to four days before we actually let them out around the chicken tractor. We've got a little bit different view on raising Cornish in chicken tractors. We don't use the chicken tractors as a cage. We more or less just use it as a shelter inside their, their electric fence enclosure. Today is Saturday, probably Tuesday, because Monday I go to work and I won't be around, so I won't do it then. But on Tuesday, what we'll probably do is we'll let these guys out, we'll keep an eye on them because we'll be home and we'll be able to see and make sure they're not escaping through the fence or anything like that. But usually they learn pretty quick. If you keep the waters and the feeders in here and kind of away from the fence, they don't really try to go through the fence too much. I wanna talk a little bit about our philosophy of raising Cornish Cross and how it differs from a lot of other homesteaders and small farmers out there that use chicken tractors. You see, a lot of folks will take a chicken tractor like you see behind me 
and they'll put their chickens in it and they'll take that chicken tractor and they'll move it every day. And that gives those chickens fresh grass every day to, to kind of like mill about on and, and eat and find bugs and things like that. And that's well and good. It's better than probably 99% of the chicken that you're gonna find in the supermarket. But even when you've got your birds stocked relatively low, like 30 birds is about the max that you can do in there. And 30 birds is about what I would consider a, a standard low to Cornish cross if that's what you're gonna do. At the start, it's totally okay. But once you get five, six weeks in and you're taking these birds to about eight weeks usually at least, we take ours as far as 11 or 12 weeks sometimes, when you have birds that are that big, you tend to start running into issues where even if you move them every day, there's not a lot of room in that chicken tractor for them to move. So they're getting fresh grass, they're eating those bugs, but you're having the problem of your birds are still relatively stationary. And I'm not discounting anybody who raises their birds this way. That's a great way to do it. But for us, being that we have this space and we have the ability to let our birds have a little bit more movement I feel like birds that walk around and, and move a lot, one, they're healthier because they're more active. It's just like people, um, you know, if you're out and about and moving, you're, you're gonna be a healthier person overall. But two, movement is flavor. If you think about all the wild game that you may have ever eaten, I don't, if you're in wild game, if you've had venison, if you've had bear, if you've had wild turkey, food that moves tends to have more flavor. Food that doesn't move, yeah, it might be more tender, but it also tends to be a little bit more bland, I found. So our philosophy is if this chicken tractor is just a shelter, a, a chicken coop, if you will, and this whole area that we have cordoned off with electric fence is their, their pasture, they're gonna be healthier, they're gonna be more tasty, they're just gonna be better birds overall. And while it takes longer for us to grow them out because they're active, they're not putting on as much weight, they're spending more energy. It's just the, it's just the way that we like to raise them and what we found works for us. Oh, I put it in backwards. Yep. <sighs> Clicking, all right. Walking away from the camera, still recording. That's it for our setup. Chicken tractor, feeders, waters, obviously. Uh, Premier One poultry netting, 10 mile electric fence charger from Tractor Supply, ground rod, and then some alligator clips. So those are kind of my feelings on it. If you're gonna make the investment and build a chicken tractor, if you're serious about raising your own Cornish cross and you think you're gonna do it more than just once, I would invest in an electric fence charger and some electric fencing and get your birds out and moving more than if they were just in the chicken tractor. You're gonna save yourself some energy. You don't have to move a chicken tractor every day. You're gonna let the birds move about more than they could if they were stuck inside the chicken tractor all day. And you're still gonna be predator proof, even more so predator proof than if you just had them in the chicken tractor, unless you electrified the chicken tractors. But I don't see a lot of people doing that. So most times, if you're gonna be running chicken tractors with birds in them, you wanna run electric anyway. So there's my feelings, I'll leave it at that. If you like what we're doing here on the homestead and you like what you saw and you wanna watch more, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. If you wanna support the channel more than just being a subscriber, there is a link to our Patreon in the description. Don't feel like you have to do that at all. We do appreciate our patrons, but it is just icing on the cake as far as we're concerned. Other than that, thanks for watching. And as always, have a great day.